from RMG Production and Soul Pepe Studio, this is Plus Angel Cry with the Wordmaster. And now it's the studio and your host, the Wordmaster. Welcome to the premiere live edition of Fourth Angel Cry. That's right. All the other episodes that you would see on the list were pre-recorded. This is the first live episode that we've done of Fourth Angel Cry. So I just want to welcome you. And for the next couple of minutes or so, that's exactly what's going to be happening. I'm going to be welcoming you. I'm just going to be talking about, yes, yeah, housekeeping things. So... The first thing that I want to say is please, please share these podcasts. And the easiest way to do so is just to go on, whether you were listening through the speaker app or on the website or the speaker webpage, please, please just share. And if you're listening on other platforms, use those podcast platforms to also share the information, and I definitely encourage those of you who are listening on other platforms to visit our website at theantidotodeception.com. Most of you would have been listening or are listening on there, theantidotodeception.com, and on the Fourth Angel Cry page. So once again, I just want to welcome each and every one of you to our first live edition. So yes, I encourage you, and I actually invite you to if you do not already have the Spreaker app, to go to your iTunes store, your Google Play store, and just type in Spreaker Player app. I think on the iTunes store it's called something differently, but it's the same thing, the Spreaker Player app, and you could download it. And then in the Favorites tab, just add Fourth Angel Cry Search, explore Fourth Angel Cry, and you'll see our logo, and it says Fourth Angel Cry. And Add it to favorites and just hit that check mark in the star. Just hit the star and you'll get a check mark and you'll know that you'll be receiving our podcast. Additionally, you have to go to settings to make sure that you get the notifications so that you don't miss any live episodes. You'll get the episode notifications, but you won't get when we're going live. And hopefully, as we go forward, this will be something that you'd want to share with others. In a little bit, I'm going to be posting, for those of you listening live, I'm going to be posting a question in the chat. And from week to week as we do the live episodes, so every Tuesday would be uploads and every Thursday would be live by God's grace. But if we're not able to do a Thursday live, we'll have an automatic upload ready to go in its place. So that's what we'll be doing from now on. But We'll have interactive questions that for those of you who join the, the platform can answer. And if you are part of our reunion media ministry WhatsApp chat, you can answer from there. I believe it's open to all. I'm not mis- if I'm not mistaken, if it's not, then I'll go back after the live and open it so that others could comment. But... Yeah, I would love to have your participation on these podcasts. So we're going to have questions, whether it's live or pre-recorded, and I'd love to have your engagement. Speaking of the platform, as I mentioned, you could go and download the podcast, the podcast player, and add, but we also have different programs different podcasts that you can listen to as well if you're new to this ministry. We have The Antidote to Deception, The Wordmaster Presents, we have From the Heart Radio. And if you are not familiar with any of those podcasts, I would like you to go to Soul Cafe Studios. That's Soul Cafe Studios dot S-I-T-E, Soul Cafe Studios, S-O-U-L-C-A-F-E, Studios dot S-I-T-E and see the list of the podcasts that we do, the logo, so that when you go back into your speaker player, you could see the right logos for 
the right shows. And speaking of our previous episodes, as I mentioned, we don't have intros to those, so we just go right into it. And on, especially at the beginning, you'll hear references to things that may not be there in the description area because we grabbed those audios from a different platform that we're using. And if you come across a scenario like that and I haven't posted it in the description area, please feel free to get in contact with me so that you could receive whatever was being offered. And now is that all important time of every podcast that I do. It's important to me because I would love the opportunity to get these messages shared with the world. And you can participate. In the description area, there are two ways you can do so. Either by PayPal or there's a link where you can go and donate. PayPal, I want to say, gives you the better option because you can, if I'm not mistaken, say how much you want to give. In the other one, it's a lump sum of $240. And with that $240, you'll get your name, business, or whatever permalinked on our website and in the description of the on the description page you you'll get a permalink also you'll be able to suggest show ideas and when we do the uploads you'll have early access to those uploads and if there's anything that you want us to mention in terms of promoting we would be more than happy to do so again. That's for the donation of $240. That's $20 a month, and you're just giving a lump sum. Additionally, if you'd like to be the sole sponsor of this, and we don't have to do the 240s for everyone, and you'd like to be the sole sponsor, you can donate $560, and you can do that by going to my cash app, and you get to do so by cash app tag, dollar sign, vpeters74, cash app, the dollar sign, the cash app tag, vpeters74, that's it, I think vpeters74, correct, right? Or you can also go to Zelle and make sure that you mention that it is, this is earmarked for the Fourth Angel Cry podcast exclusive sponsorship. And make sure that you include in the memo area your email address. Or well, just, if you just want to let me know that you want to be the sole sponsor for the podcast ministry. And I'll get back in contact with you about the sponsorship information. Okay, well, that's that for that. If you would like to be added to our notification list, the one I mentioned earlier on WhatsApp, please text me on WhatsApp at 786-759-0765, 786-759-0765, and just mention that you would like to be added to the Reunion Media Ministry. Reunion Media Ministry. Reunion Group Media Ministry. I think it's called a Reunion Media Ministry. And I will gladly do so. And if you'd also like to receive our free e-booklet to help you understand more about prophecy in a concise format, please let me know. Please, please, just again, once again, contact me by area code 786-759-0765 on WhatsApp. Let me know that you want to be added to our notification group or you'd like to receive the free booklet. So at this time, we're going to get ready to get into our podcast for this week. We're going to have just one this week, and then by God's grace going forward, as I said, Tuesdays uploaded and Thursdays by God's grace live. So at this time, we're just going to go into a transition for a little bit, and then we come back with our presentation for this week entitled, No More Blurred Trees, Seeing All Things Clearly.
no more blurred lines. In Mark chapter 8, verses 22 to 25, the Bible reads, And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring him, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he, if he saw art. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes, and made, and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. Notice what we just read here in Mark 8, beginning from verse 22. So, some men brought their friend, family member, right, to Jesus to be healed. Notice what their request was to touch him. Right? And they besought him to touch him. It is a prayer of my heart, my friends, that those of you who are actually seeing clearly or at least clearer would have a desire to go back and tell your friends about the things that you're seeing and to even pray that the Lord will touch their eyes so that they could see. And notice what happened. In verse 23, the Bible says, And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. Before I continue, as I said in previous podcasts, please, when you come to these forums, whether it's live or pre-recorded, bring your Bible, your hardcover or your app. Please, I do not want you to think that I'm saying something and you hear me say something, but it is not true from the Word of God. I want you to go back and study for yourself and so you could have the reference that I'm presenting either that or take notes and make sure you go back and listen and go back and study Uh, so once again verse 23 said and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town and when he had spat on his eyes and put his hands upon him he asked him if he saw art so in other words Jesus is saying that well, Jesus, first thing he did was lead him out of the town. And we're going to look at that when we get into the understanding and the exposition of the verse. But I want you to see that exactly what he did was he led him out of the town. He took him away from the crowd, from the masses, from the prying eyes. And he touched his eyes. Initially, though, he says... I see men as trees walking. In other words, he does not say that he's seen trees walking. Don't read that into what he's saying. He's saying that he sees men as trees. In other words, a tree is upright. A tree has branches, hands, legs, you know, so forth, as we would say. You know, the tree trunk, the tree branches, the tree roots, and so forth. And so, how he knew what a tree was, Obviously, he probably had seen trees before and he was made blind and he wasn't born blind. That should be without argument, right? Because he's describing, he says, I see men as trees. But that's not what Jesus wants. He doesn't want people to see as trees. He wants it to be seen for what it really is. And the Bible says in verse 25, and he put his hands after he put his hands again upon his eyes, right? And made him look up, and he was restored, and saw every man clearly. Friends, this is what happens in our spiritual experience. When we become born again as believers, the Lord allows us to see things in a primary way, and it is our desire And if it is our desire to see more, we will ask for more. He does not presume. He does not assume. Right? And here in this experience, he's given us a living and active parable to show us as God's people here in the end time how things are supposed to be. So, 
Here's our scenario for today. When this man was blind, when this man could not see, he couldn't even have perception, you know, as we want to look at analogy. You're driving down the road and you come up to a puddle of water. In your mind, it's just superficial. Your tires are going to go over it and you're just going to splash a little bit of water in the ear. However, that's your perception. But say today that the reality is that as you're going down and you know like how we do, you squint and you try to, by the squinting, make the deep ditch just a puddle of water. You're driving. You don't stop to get out your car to go and look. You're driving. You're going through, but you're squinting because you're trying to see if by your perception that it's just a puddle, nothing deeper. Like I said, suppose on this day, it is more than just a puddle. It's actually a ditch and your car ends up going into this deep ditch because you relied on perception. This is actually what's going on in our world today. We have flawed logic, flawed our perception, the way that we see things. The Bible, the Word of God tells us, do not lean on your own understanding. And it is because persons today are leaning on their own understanding. Why? Why? They are being assaulted. And not just any assault, their sixth sense, the perception, is being assaulted. In other words, it's being told, you're seeing wrong. This is how you're supposed to see. In Revelation 18, my friends, and I want you to go back and look at Revelation 18. I want you to go back and read Revelation 18 and see how the Bible clearly shows that there's going to come a time when men are going to see the system clearly. They're going to see for what it is. No more blurred trees. Everything is going to be clear. And I trust and pray that you're going to be one of those people who are not on the outside, not the merchants, you know, and not all those people who are wailing, but you would have already decided to come out. Notice again in the reading, Jesus led the man out so he could see clearly. And that's what he has to do. Right, He has to lead people out of Babylon because once you continue to stay in Babylon, your perception, the light that's in you is going to become darkened. Notice at the beginning of Revelation 18, the Bible says what? That loud cry is to persons in Babylon and those persons are called his people. Right? So understand that God has a people in Babylon who he's calling out. They have some measure of light like Luther and the rest of the reformers of his day who came out of the Roman Catholic Church. And that is the beast, that is the Babylon, that is the mother of harlots that we look at here on Fourth Angel's Cry. And we don't make any reservations about it. If you study scripture, if you have an understanding of the word of God, you, will, you too will know clearly that this is indeed the true Word of God. And in fact, Revelation 17 is a primer. And if you go back and study Revelation 18, 17, the chapter right before our theme chapter, Revelation 18, you too will understand that indeed, that all these things that I'm telling you about, the Roman Catholic Church, that is the mother of harlots, and that is a system here described as the beast system that God is calling his people out of. And yes, there are God's people in Babylon. There are God's people in the Roman Catholic Church. And so I do not sit here and point and condemn because even the very priests, the nuns, and the persons in the hierarchy, if they are true and sincere and doing things according to the light that they've received, they too will hear the voice of God and come out. It has been that way. It will be that way up until the end of time. And so, friends, I want to encourage you to go back and read the entirety of Revelation 18 because you'll see what happens when men begin to see clearly and they see that Rome, the Roman Catholic Church, is indeed the mother of all the beasts of the earth. And again, a beast represents a kingdom, a system. So, in the political arena, 
in the religious arena, in the educational arena, in the legislative, the judicial arena, you have the tentacles of the beast, right? But above all that is a Roman Catholic hierarchical system. And again, we're not talking about persons. We're not attacking people. Again, God says that he has people there in that system. And so I dare not, I dare not do what God said not to do. It is a message against coming out of the system. It's not a, a message that all the people in that system are corrupt. If it were, God would not have said, come out of her, my people. It would have been just a wholesale, just rejection of the papacy, wholesale rejection of Catholicism, wholesale rejection of that system. But the warning is not against people. The warning is against the system. Because as we've looked at in previous podcasts, go back again and listen to those. The Bible is clear that it is the hold of Satan. It is where Satan dwells. It is the seat. It says capital here in this world. Rome, the Vatican, and its tentacles go far and wide throughout the length and breadth of the world. And here in Revelation 18, the Bible is clear that it is indeed the mother of harlots. In fact, the Bible says that this system controls not just modern day slavery, but the souls of men. Go on and read and it will tell you exactly the topic that we're looking at today. It shows that through its witchcraft, through its sorcery, through its spellbinding ways, it is causing men to be seeing things with the wrong perception. They're squinting, trying to get at the truth, but that's not how you get at the truth. The truth is centered in Jesus Christ, and that's the only way that the scales are going to fall from people's eyes. If they turn and look to Jesus Christ, their only Savior. So remember when we saw that and we talked about and we emphasized that Jesus led the blind man out of the city? There are certain reasons and several reasons for the Lord having to do that for us. Think about the Apostle Paul when he was converted. He had to be separated. He had to go to a place by himself. And God sometimes has to take us out of certain environments into other areas, right? And we would need to learn lessons because if we are surrounded with the noise and the confusions of society, it serves no purpose. It does not allow the Lord to re-educate us. So when the children of Israel were coming out of Egyptian slavery, he did not say to them, well, go over there into this Egyptian little village or little city and I'll teach you from there. No, they have to come out of the entire system. Notice how Egypt was so ingrained in many of them that they had a desire to go back in these last days. God is preparing, God is training, God is raising up a people who will not want to backpedal to the Roman Catholic system. I trust and pray, friend of mine, that if you know friends, if you know family who are part of the system, that like the persons who brought the blind man to Jesus, that you will do so so that he can touch them, lead them to Jesus, my friends, lead them to Jesus. Again, God would have persons led out of that system to actually re-educate them, retrain them for his system. You see, here's the thing. Many persons in these systems are prone to slavery. Do what, again, as we said earlier, it is do what I say, you're wrong, I'm right. And so let's just say, for example, in the media, again, one of the main tentacles that the system has to control you, and the system, again, is the Roman Catholic system. One of the main things that it does is the media, because whether it's social media, the information media, or every other thing that's coming out in terms of media to educate you or to indoctrinate you, that is the mouthpiece in the secular world just as it has its churches and religious organization in the spiritual world. So in the secular world, the news media will tell you, over here is fake news, over here is alternative news, on that side is conspiracy theory and conspiracy theorists. Do not listen to them. 
They do not have the truth. They do not have your best interest at heart. We do. We do. And so God would have to isolate us from all of that. Right? Here's another sobering thought. Here's another sobering thought. Many of us have come out of that system and similar systems connected to that system or in bed with that system. But those principles have not come out of us. And one of the reasons why God would seek to bring us, as he would say, calm me apart, right, and rest, come out of her, my people, is because he wants to speak to us without the clouds and the blurriness and the dim visions. So that initial touch is a touch of awakening, but it is not a touch of full realization. We don't get that unless and until we're ready for it. So, in other words, just as it was with ancient Israel when they were coming out of Egypt, notice the Egyptian mentality. They had the mountains on either side of them, they had the Red Sea in front of them, and they had the Egyptian army behind them. But because they could not see the Almighty God and His work, and because they could not see His plan, all they saw was Moses steering them wrong. Moses, did you bring us out here to bury us because there was not enough graves in Egypt? They were crying out for deliverance, but at the first time of trouble, they go into slave thinking. And that's what would happen if God does not steer people right in our day. He said that he had to take them around a long way, right? So that they would not see war. Again, the slave mindset would be to retreat. God knows what he's doing when he's calling his people out. And so there are people actually now who are not affiliated with any church organization. All they have been is just called out of the Babylonian system. Whether and what constitutes that system in its varied branches, whether it's Catholicism on a whole or apostate Protestantism, because yes, my friends, as I've mentioned before, apostate Protestantism, apostate Protestantism is in line and in step and in bed with the papal power. Friends, do not try to squint. Do not try to use your own perception when it comes to understanding this papal power. You see the Pope and you see the holy, f the, the priests and the fathers and in their beautiful regalia and so forth. You hear them apologizing for things of the past. You hear them claiming that we are not the same people anymore. You see them going all over the world and doing all these wonderful things. But it is still the same church that they're the persecuting of people in the dark ages. It is still the same church that when it came into the new world, it stole Indian land. It, 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 it sought to convert them at the end of a spear. That is not the kingdom of Christ, my friend. That is not true Christianity. True Christianity does not compel the conscience. It invites. It invites. It does not curse. It pleads and begs even. That is not true Christianity. And so, you don't even have to try to second guess or to even lean on your own understanding that is this the right place I'm supposed to be. The affirmative answer is a clear, definitive N-O. No. The Bible says, come out of her, my people. So there must be a coming out. The Babylonian system is the Roman Catholic, Catholic system. It's one and the same. It's one and the same. There is no difference. There is no difference. The mark of the beast and all that applies to it is talking about the Catholic system. We have a presentation on that in one of the episodes. Go back and listen to the previous episodes, friends. As you begin to see clearly, friends of mine, as you begin to see clearly, as God allows you to have restored vision because you have been let out and you would have allowed the Lord to touch your eyes. Here's what's going to happen. Like Luther, like Luther, when it comes to image worship, you're going to realize that it is wrong. 
there's one thing that was wrong. And I'm going to show you something. In many of the Christian churches of today, they say that the Ten Commandments have been done away with. They say we no longer need these laws to guide us. When Luther was a part of the Roman Catholic Church system, when he was a faithful priest and monk, he bowed down to images, he bowed down to these idols that his superiors told him were representations of Peter and the other saints and even the goddesses that they brought in. And these were pagan goddesses and gods that they brought in to placate the pagan world. So when the pagans joined in, in 321 AD, go back and do the research. They just baptized them as it were. It's all baptized paganism, and they gave them religious names. And again, that reminds me, please, friend of mine, please do not forget when you contact me, 786-759-0765-786-759-0765 on WhatsApp, please remember to ask and request that booklet that will help you to to understand a lot more of what is going on. It's a very concise book, and it'll help you to see clearly what's been taking place in our world today. Friends of mine, no one understand that Luther, in his separation, had, he had to let go of the fact that these were not gods, and these could not save, and by you bowing down, there was no remedy. You was not you were not worshiping anything that was true. It's all glorified satanic worship. And then, as I was saying, in order for the in order for Luther to know that was wrong, that had to mean that the Ten Commandments was binding because one of the Ten Commandments said, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images, and thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor worship them. Friend of mine, friend of mine. I want to say to you that there's another commandment in there that Luther, he still observed even to his death because even though it was introduced to him, he still could not see the light on that. And it's not like he will be sent to hell. Well, for your understanding of what being sent to hell means, because he rejected the Sabbath. He did not fully see the light of it. And the Bible says that every man be persuaded in his own mind. And if Luther was just to go along with the Sabbath just because some of his friends were Sabbath keepers, that would be wrong. That would be wrong. So Luther, as a faithful Sunday keeper, right, was still under the Sunday worship mantra of the B system. But it is not until our day when Sunday worship being enforced by law is going to make it that which is the significant thing that separates the people of God from the people of the world. So understand, Luther, he stopped and he realized that image worship was wrong against the law of God, but he could not see fully the light on the Sabbath. God is going to have a people called out so that they could see all these things that Rome has promulgated, image worship, or in other words, idolatry, worshiping something else and claiming that it is God. In our day, they deifying the planet, and it's all about Mother Nature. See how insidious it is? The Sunday Sabbath, which they themselves brought in, and not Jesus. The state of the dead, which they continue to promulgate by claiming that you're going to burn in hell forever and ever. And they love to talk about that, especially purgatory and all these things, which the Bible does not condone. In fact, Jesus says that for the believer, death is asleep. But in Catholicism, you're told that you go to purgatory, right? And you have to pay, you have to buy and all these things your way out into heaven. And it takes thousands upon thousands of years to do so. And persons continue to pay and pay for the souls of their dead relatives. Oh, my friends, 
can you now understand why God has to restore the vision of his people in stages? If it was all at once, if it was all at once and they were shown all these things at once, could you imagine the shock to the system? But God does not want us to serve him out of fear, but out of love. And the principle of love is that glory message that comes from the fourth angel of Revelation 18, the earth being lightened with the glory of God. It's a message of love. God loves his people, and he wants his people that are still located in Babylon. And if, by God's grace, that you, dear listener, are one of those persons that's still inside of Babylon, God is calling you to come out. God is calling you to come apart and to be able to be taught of him. And I want to especially invite you to contact me on the WhatsApp and request the booklet. To contact me on the WhatsApp and to say I want further studies. I want to know more about the truth as it is in Jesus. And if this applies to anyone, even in apostate Protestant churches, and you want to know more, I invite you to get in contact with me and let's have a frank, candid, but all too important discussion about the truth as it is in Jesus. As we start to wind down, my friends, I want to, first of all, thank you for joining us today as we initiate our first live Fourth Angel Cry podcast. What a pleasure it has been just to speak to you in this manner. As we continue, as we go forward, I just encourage you to stay the course, stay the course. You see, my friends, the only way, like I said, the only way that you're, only, that you're going to be able to see clearly is by allowing the Lord Jesus Christ to touch your eyes and that being your spiritual eyes and your perception, right? The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. As I said today, many persons are vying for your attention and they're seeking to grab you. They're seeking to, to lay hold upon you and make you believe that what they are presenting to you is the truth. Friends, as we start to wind down, I want you to see clearly. I want you to be able to know and understand that the media, that the entertainment world, the politics, the majority of religion, the mentioned education system, all of these things are corrupted, right? And none of them, none of them, by and large, are pure as some of them might have been. And the messages that are coming across, even in our elementary schools, are seeking to pervert the minds of our young people to their way. The political world, the social world, the economic world, everything is about to fall. Because, again, the scales are falling off the eyes of people. And God is having a generation that is seen clearly. They could no longer lie to you. They could no longer deceive you. I want to close with this. For many of you who took the COVID-19 vaccine, you see here how clearly I'm talking to you, brethren, friends, because there comes a time when a person has to realize that it's now or never. It's now or never. And if you don't hear these things now, you may never. And so many of you took the COVID-19 vaccine and you wouldn't have, have asked, what's in this? What's, what is this about? What's going on here? Is this tested? Is it safe? What's really happening? What's really happening with the COVID-19 agenda? Yet, there are those persons that my fellow believers, my fellow Christians would have thought to give a book to. And you know the first question that comes from the person's mouth? It's not, why are you, why are you giving this to me? Why do I deserve this? No, it's, what is that? What is that? Now, clearly, it's a book, and they've asked the wrong question. What's this about? Why, what, what's, what, why, what's the purpose of you giving me this, right? The first question is, what is that? It's a book. They know that it's a book. What they mean to ask is that. So, you mean to tell me you didn't even have one question 
before you took the COVID-19 shot. And this is indicative of other areas of society. Things that we eat, things that we wear, things that we listen to, things that we read, things that we consume, whether it's through the mouth or through the mind. And we don't question, we, we don't have our soldiers at the front of our mouth. We don't have the soldiers at the front of our minds. But God, as I said, is raising up a generation of people who are seeing clearly, who are now embracing clarity rather than obscurity, who no longer are seeing blurred trees, but they are seeing the men and the demons behind these men for who they really are. Whether it's your president, whether it's your pope, whether it's your prime minister, you have got to look at people differently, and that is through the eyes of Jesus. Because as much as persons try to warn you against scammers, the real scam artists that you have to worry about are the ones that don't appear to be so. I trust and pray that you will go before the Lord and that you will ask him to help you to see clearly. May God bless you super abundantly until next time. You have been listening to Fourth Angel Cry, hosted by the Word Master. For more information, please see our website at theantidote2deception.com. Please join us next time.